Hello and welcome to Flory Models Get View Time. Today we've got, this is uh, Hobby 2000's 172nd scale F111F, The Desert Storm. But it's not, it's a rebox. It's actually the classic Hasegawa kit. Now the Hasegawa kit has been actually very much a sought after kit and it's been out of production for a while and very, very hard to come by, especially in the UK. So for Hobby 2000 to come along and do a rebox of it, actually it's a really nice thing indeed. So it was very much a welcome sight to see this kit come back. So anyway, no frills box art as you can see, but it's very nice to see it. So basically this is the one with the paved penny site underneath it uh, for doing laser uh, designated. We all remember, or you are if you're a certain age, seeing probably for the first time uh, laser guided bombs dropping through, you know, front doors and uh, ventilation shafts and things like that from the footage from the first Gulf War and uh, they were all coming from these so again very nice as well we've got a lake and heathbird so obviously based in the uk now been superseded by the f15es but uh, really nice so anyway enough chat onto the kit so as you can see we've got a couple of options down in here obviously these are all the ones that are based down in saudi at the time they were the uk squadroned ones so actually what you've got down in here is the uh, 48 tactical fighter wing uh, down in there and then obviously we've got both uh, versions of this particular said unit all right so very nice to see down in there you've got your kit number for this one is 72038 and we've got a little bit of blurb just down there on there okay inside the kit box itself that's going to sit it is you can see it's actually a packed box it's not a problem it is technically what we call the oem so this here this pack comes direct from um obviously hasagawa to Hobby 2000 and then they do their instructions and decals and bits and pieces for it. So that's the actual original kit as you can see it down in there. All right, so in the box itself, we are greeted by the instructions and hopefully some decals and the all important mask set, which is the really nice thing with Hobby 2000 stuff. Okay, so got your usual, your color call outs for pretty much everyone. You can see down in here, so we've got Tamiya, Ravel, Mr. Color, Hataka, Ammo, Alclad, and AK as well. All right, so that's quite nice. And then say, so you do get the mask set, which is a lovely touch with all of their kits. Okay, so straight into it. Welcome back to uh, the 1990s. <laughs> if you're a certain age of modeler, you'll know Hasekawa kits very well. So what we've got down in here is that classic tub. So if you're not familiar with the F111, uh, you'll know it actually has an ejection cell. Uh, so it actually has this entire in section here ejects from the rest of the aircraft. It's not seats that come out. So it's slightly different how it all goes together. So that goes in there literally just like that. All right, so you've got the front end of it sort of going in. So it's quite modular the way it goes, so bear with me, all right? so seats and details going through like that there is a little bit of upper stuff as well that's going to fit under here q9 the clear part you've got b17 is going to go up in there make sure you put that in because you're not going to be able to do it after all right front combing various things down in there like that there's a couple of holes to uh, probably open up and there's probably a couple to fill by the looks of it or cut off all right so we've got the different ones down in there we've got the bay underneath as well so that will go through and close up under there then you're over to the other side and again it's a little bit modular as we were saying so we've got the wheel well bay is going to go in and going to drop through the top we've got the engine intake ones are going to be on the sides are going to fit through and then you're going to sandwich those back halves together then you've got the front section going to go on and then these go on the front here just like that these somewhat hinge as well if i remember rightly onto those all right so you're getting them in and then you're going to be bringing it all together so with front and rear section together you're probably going to need a little bit of filler if i remember correctly but it'd be well worth it once it's all in intakes being fitted down in there we've got that ram spike being fitted down in there all very complex in the day there's loads of grill fins and blades in there to try and slow that air down nowadays it's a little bit more modern ways of doing it but anyway all of those being fitted down into that and then obviously the various parts being dropped in and then the gear so the gear again massive beefy gear remember this used to be or was going to be a carrier born aircraft so it's got huge chunky gear okay so again all of those being fitted down into this one as you can see and then that being fitted down into it and that giant door that swings down as the gear retracts up inside okay the engines as well so obviously we've got the spike system on the system so you've got like an inner nozzle with fairings and the outer one goes over the back of it uh, you can actually see through it okay nice touch with those 
as well that's being fitted down onto this one then we've actually got the tailplanes being fitted onto this one the exhaust going in the little dump fuel area that goes between the actual tails being fitted down into those and those fins ventral fins being fitted in nice touch with this one obviously you've got deployed um, uh, slats and uh, flaps on this which is really nice as well okay so you can pop all of those in like that opening up for the holes obviously for those being fitted down into this one and then obviously the wing section being pushed in and tail on and then obviously you've got your fuel tank so fuel tanks being fitted down into this one I have no idea what these are supposed to be I'll be honest I've got I can't even think what they are uh, back in the day I'm assuming they're supposed to it looks like if I'm honest they look like the old-fashioned Durandale bonds the anti-runway device but could be completely wrong but anyway uh, those down in there obviously uh, sidewinders so we've got the Echo and J version with a long nose again I thought they would have been phased out by the time this was in these markings so again you might want to do your check on your references on there pylons all being fitted down into there and then obviously we've got the actual the paved penny uh sorry the paved spike uh pylon being fitted down underneath the actual belly of the beast down in here so uh, that's that one being done color call outs and markings as i said beautiful work down in here uh, so yes, this has got the more sort of uh, Euro 1 scheme, shall we say, than that standard uh, sort of, you know, uh, Southeast Asia one. So it's got the darker green uh, and then obviously you've got the sort of the normal green and then the tan onto there like that. And then obviously we've got the one on the other side. Again, do you know what? This is actually a real blast from the past, this kit. I built this kit, felt like a lifetime ago, but uh, it probably was, to be honest but it, uh, it's actually a really, really nice kit. So as we said before, you do get these little guys as well. So these are actually quite nice. So really nice, proper die cut mask set for it. So there you go, that saves all your masking problems, your clear parts, and obviously for your wheels and stuff like that. So that's a really nice bonus touch with these kits. And we've got the decals. So again, not massive sheet of decals, but it's very nice, good color, good registration with all of those, pretty much everything you want to need with that one. Okay, so into the bag. So, good old fashioned cutting in. We've done this for a while. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, so in here we have, I'll tell you what, we'll start with the clear parts for a change. Things are staring us in the face. So, one piece clear part top this is because of the way it ejects and all the rest of it there's an entire front cell that comes out of this thing which is really really different okay so there you go that's your clear parts and to be honest they're not too bad at all one of the th problems you get with some of the other kits in 48 scale is that the profile of this canopy is wrong but if I remember rightly this one's fine 72nd one is actually okay so again really nice if you wanted to you could take your life in your own hands and cut this and have it with the door so they could be open, which could be a nice touch for this particular kit, but personally probably play safe and just do it in the closed position. But generally, nice good clarity there. Okay, down in amongst it. Right, well we'll do it as we get it. So to start off with, this is the actual pave spike pod system. So this goes underneath the belly, this attaches to it in here like that. If I remember rightly, this retracts uh, and goes up into it, but it's showing it in the sort of down position and everything else. We've got the instrument panel down in here, the instrument panel combing in at the top. So that's very nice indeed. Okay, and then we're in amongst it. So down in here, this is the actual uh, main rear fuselage. You can see it's all very good, very sharp, very nice recessed details on this kit. So that's the beautiful thing about this kit got some really nice touches to it and again it does have some of these this is for the intakes and they've even put in the little well they're like vortex generators it was to slow the airflow down coming into the engine so it wasn't coming at supersonic speed along with this guy as well which is a spike system uh, for stopping it to, uh, coming down the exhaust too quick okay and then again we've got the other doors as well and then there's a little few ejector pins on these you're gonna have to take care of all right but generally very nice but that system on the back there it's a big old lump this thing Okay, very nice. As you can see it down in there like that. Okay, the nose section, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, difficult to see on here because of the way it is. But if you see this line that goes down here, along here, then up, this entire section ejects, not the seats, this entire pod goes up and then it comes down in a cell. 
uh, with its all together. But as I say, you've got a front one going to be going on, then you've got the part on here. This will go to the back of it. But again, you can see really nice, really sharp, crisp panel lines in amongst all of that. Then you've got the fuel dump area down between the engines down in here. And again, very nice indeed. And then we've got these as well with some bottles and various things in right the way through. We've got this one as well for the actual uh, undercarriage. It's going to fit down in here. So some of the details, some of the parts as well. That's all looking very nice. And again, that all important gear. So we've got the nose gear, the main bay doors, as I say, more details, lots of detail in this kit. And there's the other side of that fuselage. No real internal details. There's a little bit there. Got a little bit in here as well, but nothing really going down in here. Again, you have to remember this is only 70 uh, second scale. Over onto this one, you can see some of the big areas. And again, really nice, that detail on the back of it. Looking pretty darn nice. Again, the gear, various things. So again, it's got a Bombay as well. A lot of people forget this thing's got a Bombay, but obviously this is going to be superseded by the other piece we had over Ha! Huh. So this one replaces this one. So you're probably not going to be using this one because this one is going to go right over the top of it. But anyway, if you were doing a different version, you've got it down there. And again, all the details. Big old tail with a rudder. Looking very nice indeed. And generally, as you can see, got some nice raised details down in here for the gear and everything. But you do find the odd little ejector pin that you may or may not want to get rid of. Okay, this here, we have two together, two locked in, as you might imagine, left and right, so exactly the same. Good details down in here. Do you know what? I think those are Durandells. Okay, but anyway, the exhausts. Uh, Durandells, I think they are. Okay, deep nozzles for your engines. We've got the pylons, the various things, the fins down the back. Again, those jumbo tires. And then down in here, we've actually got the fuel tanks and we've got the stabs down here at the back. Very, very nice indeed. And again, match pair on that, so we've got two of those. Last up, for me, it was the highlight of this kit. Beautiful detail for the wings with the actual drop flaps as well. So that's really nice. So you've got front slats and flaps on this one. A little bit of scratching around on the mold, but that's nothing that a good coat primer won't take care of. And again, there's that deployed flap system. Very nice. And again, we've got two holes open, but you do have an option on a third if you wanted the outer pylon. I don't think it carried it at this point. I think it was just down to two, but very, very nice indeed. That is a real blast from the past. And actually, it's a really nice kit. It's one of those things, back in the day, because of injection molding, you can see the limitations of trying to mold complex shapes and parts. And like F14s, you know, the F111 is very much complex. And to get the tooling to be able to get into all those nooks and crannies and all those angles, they've broken it up from front and rear. Nowadays, you probably just have two halves come together and away you go. But in those days, it was two halves and then front and backs come in and then the wings and everything else. Trust me on this one, it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. It does go together relatively well, but I must admit, you might need a little bit of filler in there, but it is only a smidge. If you're careful with your lineups, your dry fitting, make sure you're all good before you commit to glue, you save yourself a lot of headaches further down the build. Anyway, there we go. That is the beautiful uh, Hobby 2000, which is obviously the Hasagawa Rebox 72nd F111 Operation Desert Storms Aardvark.